the Hallmarkies podcast. This is a very special episode that we are doing. We celebrate Christmas all year long on the Hallmarkies podcast. And today we are looking back at some Hallmark classics. And in the world of Hallmark, anything pre-2010 is definitely a classic. So that's what we're talking about today. It's going to be really fun. I'm film critic Rachel Wagner, and Thaddeus is here to do this. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. All right. Thanks for having me back again. Really looking forward to discussing these movies and taking a look at some classic Hallmark. Yeah. We haven't had you on since the holidays, so I hope you've had a good 2022. It's been pretty good so far overall. Uh, That's good. How do you feel about Hallmark? How do you think they've done so far this year? Ooh, um, <laughs> so I think that the, the, there was like a little bit of a rough start um, yeah. to, the, to the year. Um, I think they, and then they kind of started to recover. I think that the spring movies um, so far, that's been the best season so far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a bit of a rough start. I was, I, I wasn't sure what was, what was going on, but it looks like they're kind of turning the corner lately. Yeah. And we got like just one kiss and always yes. more. And there were some pretty good ones there in like March and April. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't as big a fan of the wedding veil movies as a lot of people. And how did you feel about those? I, uh, I actually tend to agree. Uh, and actually, I think they it kind of varied. Like the first mm-hmm. one was okay. The one, the second one in Italy, I was not a big fan of at all. The third one was, to me, was the best of the three. Yeah. But none of them were like classics that I loved. They were, you know, the, the, fir- the two that I liked were just kind of likes, kind of tepid likes. Yeah. Me. I agree. They, I mean, I, I don't think any of them were like unwatchable. They were just kind of dry to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of I agree. Well, these will be fun. When did you first start uh, watching Hallmark movies? Um, Let's see. So I think I've kind of, it's kind of always been on and, mm-hmm. and, and kind of in the background or whatever on Christmas. I, I think that I started to really pay attention closely uh, when I actually when I was in medical school um, Mm -hmm. and like in the like kind of early 2010s like 2010 2012 uh, and I think what really cemented it was in the middle of um, like 2015 I was taking a test I had to go and stay with my cousin (laughs) um, to to take the test because there there weren't any um, places in the city that I was living in um, where I could actually take it. And one of the things we did, I was like really freaking out um, and nervous about taking this test. I was like, okay, let's just watch a, watch a Christmas movie. Yeah. And it was actually the nine lives of Christmas. No way. Um, we watched it together and we were kind of, and really enjoyed it. We were kind of laughing um, and just had a great time. And that kind of really cemented it for me at that point. And what year was that? So I think it, it must have been 2015. Was that the year that it originally came out or what, whatever year? Yeah, was it? that was its year. Yeah. 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 So, so that was, I mean, and I think that was the first actual countdown to Christmas year. Okay. Pretty that sure. sounds about right. That sounds about yeah. right. Uh, so yeah, you got in early. I, I was actually before it, we started the podcast 2017 and before that, I was really more of a Christmas Hallmark viewer, maybe mm-hmm. an occasional Hall of Fame, maybe occasional. I had seen um, How to Fall in Love and mm-hmm. a few others, but for the most part, I was a, uh, I was Christmas a Christmas person. person. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I hadn't seen nearly as many as Amber had seen oh, yeah. when we started. She mm-hmm. was way, way more knowledgeable. And I had never seen any of the mysteries. And I didn't want to cover them at first because, mm-hmm. I don't know, they just, uh, they're still not like my favorite favorite, but I have grown to appreciate them. Yeah, I, but, I think uh, they're, they're, those mysteries, the way that Hallmark does them, you kind of have to get used to their format for the yeah. mysteries. And plus, the, you know, there's definitely some very variation in like the quality between the different franchises that they have on over yeah. there. Yeah. Definitely. And I the uh especially it took me a while. The first one that I really got into was the garage sale mysteries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, those were fun. I I, I like those too. 
they are my favorite. So uh, it's it's been a been a journey. But these were all three of the ones we're talking about today. All three ones that I had watched a lot and knew of, and mm-hmm. were in, all three of these were in my I think top and my original top twelve countdown to Christmas okay. movies. So they're ones that I I've been a, a fan of for a long time. Okay. Um, and Me too. Uh, it's spoiler it's, alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, but it's interesting. What just as a whole, these three movies we're doing: Chris, the Christmas Card, All I Want for Christmas, and Mrs. Miracle, the original Mrs. Miracle. Um, is there anything you noticed about them that you think is really different than what they're doing uh, than current Hallmark? Yes. The main thing I noticed, I felt like the characters all were more developed in general because it seems like in like a lot of the modern, you know, Christmas movies, it's like, you know, you have to have these these Christmas activities that you have to include somehow. And in these, it, it wasn't under doesn't seem like it's under that strict, um, you know, guideline. And so they had more time to actually like develop the characters. The mm-hmm. scene is not as overly decorated, which actually the over decoration is, is kind of a fun thing that they've added that I like to kind of make fun of. But, you know, it's not that much. And all three of these movies had mid movie kisses. So <laughs> that's um, true. And I, find- I also in two out of three of them end in church. Which is, Mm -hmm. you probably, unless it's like a Kirk Franklin or, you know what I mean? Something like that. Mm -hmm. That probably wouldn't happen now. Yes. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. I can think when we get into the individual movies, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And two out of the three also have uh, them getting, the the leading heroines getting engaged to somebody they don't like. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So that's different too. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's start talking about the Christmas card. And the Christmas mm-hmm. card is pr- one of the most popular Hallmark mm-hmm. movies. I I asked uh, on Twitter uh, what were some people's favorites classics, and this came up a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very popular. It came out in 2006, and uh, it. Uh, it stars um, Ed Asner, John Newton in the lead, and then Alice Evans and Louise Nettleton play, playing uh, the mom, mm-hmm. Ed Asner playing the dad. And uh, the little summary is U.S. soldier visits the town where an inspirational Christmas card was sent to him by a church group that mails cards out to servicemen as a goodwill effort. Mm-hmm. So overall, what did you think about this movie? So I actually remember watching this when I when it originally came out. So this was one of the ones that I'd seen before I started kind of watching regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my mother's favorite Hallmark movie. Um, she pretty much watches it whenever it's on. Like I will text her if I see that it's you know supposed to come on, and she'll watch it. My father pretends not to like it, but he also will watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and. Um, I really enjoy it. And I actually think of this movie as kind of like the prototype for like the modern um, or kind of today's Hallmark Christmas movie. Um, I Mm -hmm. think, you know, a lot uh, of the modern Christmas movies kind of try to follow, you know, what what this movie did. Um, But I think that this does it. This movie does it better than most. And so Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it personally. Yeah, I think the closest comparison that I can think of is probably A Veteran's Christmas. Mm, yeah, I think it's very similar, not just the army part, but just the whole town feel. And mm-hmm. I mean, in that one, they they kind of they kind of go straight to, to staying in the town. But uh, but this one, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's interesting because I think the biggest difference. And even though you do see bad men of business kind of thing, I just don't think you'd see a fiance quite like uh, what's his name in this movie. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Paul. Is it Paul? Yes, Paul. That's his name. Paul. <laughs> and I think um, with him, 
So one difference is, I mean, he's, I think he, well, he comes in later and you don't, re- you don't, didn't really find out about him until like right before he shows up. And then they're kind of playing out the, tr- they're, they played into the triangle a bit more than mm-hmm. um, a lot of the modern movies do. do. Um, he proposes in the middle, uh, I mean, somewhat late in the movie and she says, yes. Um, I think she seems more genuinely torn um, than we typically see. And I kind of actually like that aspect. And what I um, think is really interesting is that the breakup, I mean, in most of these movies, from what I've seen, the breakup usually happens, oh, we um, kind of are going in different directions and I happen to meet someone else. But in this one, it seemed like their breakup was more just that she fell out, fell in love with someone else. And mm-hmm. she, as during that time, she's kind of realizing um, that the differences of and in the way that they want to live their lives. So I th- so I actually think that that's pretty that's different. And um, I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. Yeah. And they you have. Paul being very jealous of Cody mm-hmm. from yes. pretty early on, like even at the, the, the toy drive. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, yeah. does, does Paul get a bum rap? Is he actually a pretty good guy, but he's just not our guy or no. I, so the thing is, it's, t- I, he, it's, I think it's tough to say with him. I don't think he's really as, as developed, um, because we don't know as much of, we didn't really get to see what their relationship was like before. We just kind of hear about it and how, um, you know, every time they start to get close, oh, he he has some some new business venture and he runs off and, you know, is kind of leaving Sarah, Sarah hanging. I mean, Faith, I'm sorry, Faith hanging. So, um, and then all of a sudden now that he sees competition, he's like stepping up his game. And so we don't really get to see like what their relationship was really like beforehand. So based mm-hmm. off from what we see, um, it's very clear that Cody's probably the better better guy for her. But um, but it would have been interesting to see a little bit more of what they were like before. Because mm-hmm. he does try. He brings toys for the toy drive he volunteers with the christmas trees he <laughs> but, got distracted and was yeah. on the phone the whole time but at least you know he, he meant to help yeah it's funny because if you're talking 2006 where cell phones were still a little less common mm-hmm. you know that everybody had it's it's kind of a uh a status symbol i think for him like mm-hmm. ooh, he 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 drinks fancy wine and talks on his cell phone <laughs> yes and he's and i remember they were like oh your cell phone gets a signal up here oh. yeah. <laughs> yes that's true <laughs> i mean and i think it goes a long way too that ed asner he's, he was like america's dad you know oh everybody God. loves ed asner and so and the fact he didn't like paul yeah. immediately makes you not like paul too oh yeah Oh yeah, I agree. I think he he was he really stole the show in this movie. I have to say, yeah. he was great. Mm-hmm. And he's fun in a lot of uh, different Hallmark movies and all mm-hmm. my heart movies. He's a highlight of those. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it se- it just seemed like he was having a lot of fun in this particular role. Yeah, yeah. Well, she starts out saying that Paul is everything I was look I'm looking for in a man. And I would like to know a little bit. I wish there was a follow-up question of like, what? Why? Yeah, what, what are you looking for? It doesn't seem like it. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, it did seem like she loved him. Like, you know, that she was, you know, mm-hmm. in love with Paul until she met Cody and was like, oh, yeah, you know, I maybe I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's just the comparison. Yeah, I guess. And then you see this opening scene with his friend, Sergeant Jones, dying mm-hmm. in, the, in the, their they are delivering a uh, aid first aid, right. mm-hmm. which, you know, of course you're not going to have anything kind of complicated as far as the military. Right. Like, could you get any more like heroic than somebody dying, delivering first aid? Yeah. And he, uh, you know, he went back for it into right, like, the... he went back for it. Yeah. And so that's like classic hallmark. Mm-hmm. It's not trying to be nuanced, that's for sure. Oh, no. Not at all. No. 
Hey, this is David from the Piecing It Together podcast, a podcast about movies and the movies that inspire them. For over four years each week, a guest and I take a look at a new movie through the lens of what other movies we think were either an influence or connect in some other way. It's a fun, unique way to discuss films that leads to a great list of other movies to check out that either explore the same themes and ideas or maybe utilize similar filmmaking techniques including special episodes in our side series that twist the format. We've done over 200 episodes, so there's bound to be one on a film you've been thinking about and want to dig deeper into. So check us out on all the major podcasting apps and at piecingpod.com. He's asked to deliver the tags to Sergeant Jones's widow. And, and actually, this was his fiance. They hadn't gotten married yet. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. But I they did. That. But they actually called her a widow in the movie. And I, I was, it was a little. I was like, why are you calling her a widow if they haven't gotten married yet? Because they they made a point like, oh, she said yes, and we're going to get married this at this. Oh this point. yeah. But wait. yeah, that is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think they have a pretty cute meet cute. Oh yeah. With uh him or, or her eating his food yes <laughs> diner because they had the like uh, kind of identical orders mm-hmm. um, from from the little diner yeah and she's like who else would order uh <laughs> the uh, curly fries club and hot chocolate that is a hearty meal yeah Oof. it really is but uh but anyway so that was kind of a cute me me cute yeah i agree yeah, and then uh, he saves Ed Asner's from getting hit by a car. Right. And that is obviously another point in his favor. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> and then when Ed Asner realizes that he is also a military man, yeah, um, that really push, pushes the odds in his favor. <laughs> yeah. And I like the fact that they didn't use the Christmas card as a point of conflict. There was no like, you didn't, you lied to me. That's why oh. you came here. You know, and there was none of that, which I'm, I'm grateful oh. for. Oh my God. That's uh, especially for something like that. Um, that would be really silly for her to get upset about. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, how could you not tell me that she, yeah. my letter brought you here? <laughs> <laughs> but I was kind of, lo- I, I, cause I hadn't seen this in a long time. So I was, I was thinking, Oh no, they're not going to do that. Right. And they didn't. And, and, uh, and he says, Ed Asner says that it doesn't matter. You got here. It's just, just great that you're here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It seems like the, the conflict that was played out was more about, basically the love triangle and her kind of being torn and he, and him thinking that, um, and, and him thinking that she had picked, uh, picked Paul. And so he was going to leave because of that. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I mean, but Paul doesn't start out great because his, the first thing that we hear from him is that you better be careful. There's a lot of twisted freaks in the army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you might as well like <laughs> say, you're a full out villain in this oh, kind yeah. of movie. If oh, you yeah, say they're yeah. twisted freaks in the army. <laughs> yeah, we we love the troops here in Hallmark Land. You yeah, can't that's right. saying. Also, he brings the wine, and that's when Ed Asner says, I always I always prefer a French fry to a French wine. Mm-hmm. I love both. It, <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't say that now probably because Hallmark, Hallmark has wine. Yeah. All, all wine, the whole club even, wine mm-hmm. club. Yeah. Um, there was a lot more time spent at the logging uh, plant, yes. I guess you'd say, than I remembered. Oh, yeah. They yeah, have several scenes, especially with um, her uncle, um, mm-hmm. you know, and they, he was kind of working on, was it the sleigh for them? And um, and that was kind of like where a lot of the exposition kind of happened. Um, yeah. And I think it was kind of showing bond between him and As- Ed Asner because he was, you know, pretty good uh, at um, doing this work on the log and he's like oh you can take yeah. over you know for me but there was a lot perfect. of what i would call like beautiful bean footage of just like showing the the logging oh yeah in the the wood and everything getting made and uh <laughs> and uh so then this is when we start to get uh the com- competition between paul and cody mm-hmm. uh the the uh, toy drive and the the tree uh, tree donation as uh, thing and we also have in these movies 
in the two out of three of these movies, the big like the big thing is to buy out the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and it's never a good look. They're always like, you did this? You bought the restaurant? <laughs> like, how could you do something like that? Even though most of these restaurants, people aren't really like going out to eat that much around Christmas time. <laughs> right. You know? but, but it's a big deal. And what I have to say about this whole, that competition thing, especially, especially the toy drive, you know, when Paul brings all these gifts um, and toys, you know, um, the the mom she was like very excited about paul's gift and then she and her reaction to cody's was actually more subdued but he yeah. just couldn't couldn't stand cody getting any kind of accolades or attention <laughs> which was kind of funny yeah the mom's more even keeled between yeah, the she's, two she's like you know let's just let um support her and whatever she, she decides to do um you know, it def- mm-hmm. def- definitely seems like she probably prefers Cody herself, but she's going to support her daughter. Um, and dad's yeah. more like, no, um, we need to make sure <laughs> that she's with the, right- <laughs> the guy that I think is the right guy who probably yeah. is, to be honest. And then they have the classic, oh, we've fallen on each other just perfectly. Yes. <laughs> Let's now. Let's kiss. Yep. Which is one of my favorites. I love that. Yeah, you don't get, usually people don't, you know, they don't kiss with the falls anymore. So, True. And this so, is like a kiss kiss. It's oh, not, yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they kiss big ones. Yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, so she says, I love Paul and kiss Cody. Oh, no. What's going yeah. on? And this is when he buys the, buys out the restaurant and proposes. Yeah. Yes. And. He just assumes that she'd be fine with leaving Nevada City. Mm -hmm. Nevada City is a big character in this film. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, but she does say yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, her car doesn't work. And so little Ed Asner, his big plan is to have Cody pick her up in the sleigh. Right. (laughs) So that was fun. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And And, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that, you know, a couple of the times you have her, like she'll call Paul for something and he is like busy doing something. And so Cody, you know, it steps up. And it's kind of, so they're kind of showing that he's m- the more reliable of the two. Yeah. yeah. He's not as in love with business. Yes. He's happy to be working at the lumber yard he doesn't want to take her away from nevada city right and then P- paul and cody kind of have a, a a fight a conversation before church yes and, uh, and Co- then they are at church and mm-hmm. paul leaves before silent night mm-hmm. yeah so uh, i i, I, li- I kind of like these things so cody actually admits like you know i'm in love with faith but she's chosen you and i'm accepting that and um and and he, and he says you're a lucky man and paul's like oh love not luck <laughs> had a lot to do with this and mm-hmm. in that scene you know we see that faith is like constantly checking the door to see if um cody's gonna come into the church yeah. and paul notices this and leaves and that is what kind of prompts their breakup because he yeah. realizes that she's in love with Cody. There's a so. lot of drama going on in this <laughs> service. There yeah. really is. Yeah. It's exciting. Uh, I I like the way that they used to involve faith in mm-hmm. the movies. That it's not a faith-based film. It's just part of life, which is yes. how it should be. Yes, it's, it's and yeah. I, I agree. It's that these are people of faith, and they're active, and they're um, you know, accurately portraying how people of faith live. I mean, especially what their lives yeah. look like at Christmas time. And so, at Christmas time, people of faith are going to spend a lot of time in church. They're going to sing hymns. They're going to they you know they pray at yeah. dinner. Um, you know, and it mm-hmm. wasn't. It was definitely not in anything heavy handed. It was just you know a part of their life, and it was a portrayal of that as a part of their life. Yeah, I can't imagine anyone being offended mm-hmm. by yeah, this is just how certain people live. It's not. It's not trying to convert you in any way. Exactly. Exactly. And so she gives back the ring to Paul, 
And then Cody leaves his present, uh, which is the bench he made. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is very swoon worthy. Mm-hmm. I think when you have a guy that's like making things, like that's very attractive. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could make things, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so they talked before about this memorial at the for the Vietnam soldiers mm-hmm. uh, on this bridge, right? And uh, and Ed Asner says, oh, "I know where he'll be." And so they go, and and uh, she finds him there, and they kiss. And he says, "If you ever leave town without saying goodbye again," <laughs> and she brought him some curly fries. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Her meal. There's a little call back to their meet cute. So, you know, I'm sure, you know, he's probably going to retire from the military and take over the little lumberjack. I'm sure they're together. They're happy. <laughs> they yeah. live happily ever after. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to say, I think some flaws, I don't know if they really have that great of chemistry. This couple, I'm not like super feeling it. And, and I think that some of the, some of the Paul Cody, uh, well, I particularly, I don't think Paul is the greatest actor. Sorry, sir. But, um, some of it can feel a little stilted, a little amateurish to me, but obviously Ed Asner is great yeah. and there are enough cute scenes and has enough heart and it's, it hits all those buttons that you need it to hit for this kind of movie. I think yeah. it has all the Christmas moments that you need. Um, so I think overall it's, it's a, it's a good movie. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I agree. I think I, I definitely bought the romance, um, the chemistry. I mean, it was, it was fine. It was, it, it didn't take away from the movie for me. Um, yeah. it, it took, it was enough for me to buy them as a couple. I think part of it was that Paul was kind of so like, slightly off-putting that it made it easier to kind of mm-hmm. invest in him as an, as an alternative. So, but, um, but yeah, so I definitely agree. And like I said, I think that this is kind of like the prototype. I think this is, I yeah. mean, not everything, but the overall feel for, um, is kind of what I think Hallmark is typically going for, for most of their Christmas. Movies. Yeah. It definitely laid the template for a long time. Yeah, I agree. You know. uh, so what would you give this? How many crowns? Um, I'm going to give it four and a half. Um, because like I said, I think I have to give it respect for kind of, like you say, said, kind of laying the foundation for what um, a, you know, a Hallmark, a modern, modern Hallmark movie is or what they were kind of yeah. until the last couple of years. So, uh, so I'll give it that. And I think since it's kind of the more, the OG, you have to give it a couple extra points. Um, also, I, you have to give some extra for Ed Asner's performance because yeah. I mean, I think that he was just incredible in this so much fun. Um, he was clearly having a ball as this character. So um, yeah, I'll give it four and a half. Points. Very good. Well, our next, uh, and I, what, what, I agree. I would give it the same. So, our next um, movie is called All I Want for Christmas, mm-hmm. and this came out in 2007, mm-hmm. and it stars Gail O'Grady and uh, Robert Mailhouse mm-hmm. uh, as uh, these BFFs. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is Friends to Lovers Hardcore. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason this is what got me started thinking about doing this was because they had Gail O'Grady back right. for Heart of the Matter. Yes. And she hadn't done a Hallmark movie since Love on Ice. And uh, I I really enjoy this movie and I feel like it's kind of underrated. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't really hear it talked about as much as Christmas Card or Mrs. Miracle. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I really like it. And basically, it's about uh, she plays a widowed single mom who uh, has uh, this son who enters her in a all I want for Christmas contest where he asks for them to find a husband for his mom. And uh, Robert Mailhouse plays their neighbor and she has friend zoned him so hard. Mm hmm. (laughs) Um, and he's basically a they're basically co-parenting yeah this boy yeah uh but uh they've just gotten super comfortable 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and he has a girlfriend uh, at this point. Yeah, he has a girlfriend. And uh, of course, as she starts dating all of these men, uh, he starts to realize that he really miss her if she mm-hmm. is with one of these, and particularly Roger, who's the son mm-hmm. of the company that's hosting the contest exactly. uh, mm-hmm. founder, um, Rod, uh, played by Greg German. And uh, I think that uh, Robert Pine, as the head of the toy company, Arthur, mm-hmm. he's like perfect. Yes, yes. He's, he's yeah, absolutely definitely... perfect. He's sort of the greedy yes. capitalist guy. <laughs> exactly, yes. Um, and 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 is playing it like a little funny. So yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. So that he's still funny enough to keep him likable. Because if he just played him top. straight, yeah. Uh, what did you think overall of this one? So I... Re- uh, I really enjoy this movie as well. I actually, I think I remember watching this when it first came out also, or maybe a couple of years later, um, yeah. but I really enjoyed it. Um, one thing that I was really impressed with was the child actor yeah. and that they didn't go like the over the top cute with him. Like he was portrayed somewhat realistically as a preteen kid Mm -hmm. um you know where he wants he's kind of wanting his mother to to be happy but then actually seeing her especially the you know with this new guy was like the reality of it was like a little much for him he had a trouble with it and then kind of realizing that um that um the the neighbor and I forgot his name um, was, al- was kind of already the kind of father figure for, for him yeah. already and kind of wanting that to, to happen. So I, so, but yeah, I, overall, I really enjoyed this movie. Yeah. It, it, it does seem almost hard to believe that you could get that comfortable that you would, like that you could friend some friend zone somebody so hard, but I really like friends to lovers and mm-hmm. I, this is, probably one of the best ways I think that Hallmark's ever done it. I really do. Mm-hmm. I think that that they have great chemistry. Yes. Uh, when he finally does kiss her, I think that is such a great moment. It's Mid-movie so good. Kiss. Yeah. And uh and she says, "Oh, we shouldn't have done that." And he says, "We absolutely should have done that." Yes. And yes. of course, all of us watching her are like, "Yes, you should have done that years ago." Finally, that's what that's finally what we, that's what the audience is thinking as we see this. And mm-hmm. I have to say that um, Greg German's character, um, while I didn't buy them as a couple, I actually liked him as a character because he yeah. was kind of starting to grow. He was kind of starting to kind of come out of from under his father's thumb. So it would have been nice. I wouldn't have minded if he had gotten like if they had given him like a like a sequel spinoff type of thing where he meets someone else. Yeah. And it kind of really comes out from under his father's thumb and and that this was kind of a catalyst for it. But definitely was, you know, more invested in the two leads getting together. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can see that he he isn't a bad man of business by any means. He is you know kind of frustrated by his dad he feels sort of unloved you do get to know him pretty well for mm-hmm. our not the right guy mm-hmm. yeah and, and, and sorry go ahead and i was gonna say and as you get to know him you kind of realize why he's not right for for sarah i think that's the the name of the, yeah. the lead character in in this movie so yeah and but you also realize that he is start like i said he's starting to grow he's starting to kind of you know, assert himself a little bit in re- in realizing that the way his father is doing things um, it, for his business is not necessarily the way that he should really be conducting himself. He's a little bit more open than his father to like actually trying to help at this uh, at the homeless shelter. So, so I liked his character, mm-hmm. but I definitely wanted the two leads to get together at the end. Well, you know things are going to be bad for for Roger when the minute he suggests that that uh, Jesse should go to boarding school. Exactly. <laughs> like, nope, that's you know wrong wrong guy right here. <laughs> wrong. Uh, I mean, did you buy this friend zoning? Do you think that that could really happen? Because he's even like the troop leader. It's they really are co-parenting this boy. Yeah, I think. To to the, the the degree that he's involved in their lives, um, doesn't makes it it 
does it make sense that they never contemplated being a couple or that she never like it seemed like to her like it never even occurred to her yeah. to like consider him <laughs> as an option for her, you know or a rom- rom- to consider him as a romantic option until you know things start we we start to get to us and, and actually until he kisses her basically even though there's definitely some moments where you could definitely see that they were attracted to each other but i think what we're supposed to believe is that she's like still so stuck in like her grief over her husband's mm-hmm. death that she's not um that she's just not her mind just doesn't even go there with anyone but so yeah it's um but the degree that he's involved in their lives is definitely a little over the top for us to buy that these two never dated or contemplated dating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, he, Jesse tells him, how could she make a decision when she doesn't know how you feel? This mm-hmm. is after Roger proposes. Right. And she says, yes. Mm-hmm. And so Jesse starts to get kind of desperate. Uh, he doesn't like Roger. He's and and then Ro- Roger says, uh, "Well, we can always get a nanny." <laughs> mm-hmm. And what uh, I like, Jesse, right? Uh, um, the only reason she agrees to go along is she runs the soup kitchen, and mm-hmm. they the landowner, the landlord, uh, is uh, going to close them down. Because they want to build condos. <laughs> of course. This, uh, this is probably the introduction of condos developers as the biggest villains in Hallmark. Yeah. They are evil. <laughs> um, anybody, that's, I think there's only one good condo developer in all of Hallmark. What, what was the name of that movie? Yeah, it was Two so funny games. last that's year because I was tweeting out, uh, will there ever be a well-meaning condo developer in a Hallmark movie? And then the next day, there was a well-meaning condo developer in yes. James Denton. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Him, too. He was a good one. Because before good. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's been two. Uh, there's him and the guy and True Love Blooms. Um, oh, right, right. Yeah. Yes. That, that's there's, true. But uh, in <laughs> hundreds of Hallmark movies. Yeah. Two My favorite Hallmark. of all time is Brendan Elliott and um, the, the Kiss... Uh, Kiss, kiss at Pine uh, Lake. Pine Lake, yeah. Yes. I love him in that. He's so funny. He gets out in the, the forest and he's like, What's all these trees? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I remember that one too. And <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> he's really good and, as a villain. <laughs> but, yeah, I know. I wish he would be a villain again. He was good on on uh, Cedar Cove too. Yeah. As a villain. He he play, he plays like the right amount of like comedy in it where you have fun mm-hmm. with him. Yeah. I agree. And so then uh, the uh, Jesse says, you're the only dad I've known. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he says, she'll end up marrying the wrong guy. If you had just told her. Mm -hmm. And that's when he comes out to the balcony. And that's when we get our kiss. Mm -hmm. He says, what do you think I deserve? Or something like that. And he says, the world. It's very romantic. Yes. And I actually really like the conversation that he and Jesse had where he's basically like, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to, you know, lose you. And he said, no, I'm always going to be part of, of your life. And he says, well, I mean, you say that now and you mean it now, but eventually we'll drift apart. And then, you know, and then, and then I am going to ultimately lose you. So, he, I mean, like I said, it's, you know, for a kid in one of these movies, he's just, he's not like, it's a bit more realistic um, and not mm-hmm. like this complete, like, idealistic you know he has he has a little bit of um you know re, 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 realism to him so yeah like and it. yeah it's not like the mop top that you see in some of these movies the cute mm-hmm. little perfect mop top exactly mm-hmm. and uh the there's uh what's it called um the um the holiday affair from mm-hmm. way back uh that that the the little boy in that movie Mm-hmm. is that kind of i think set the standard but he is like the most mop top uber cute perfect yeah. <laughs> kid. oh yes. yeah yeah and that uh so i and i do like i said i love that whole what do i deserve then the world mm-hmm. yes and then the kiss and they have really good chemistry i agree 
which is really which good. is part of why the you know you say like the friend zoning doesn't make sense when you have you know you're this close and you have that kind of chemistry like really you mm-hmm. never nothing ever happened to you to y'all for all these years right you never you never even considered it really um so they start to prepare this uh this a uh, wedding, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I like the fact that uh, he says, I didn't say I was sorry. And even though you're marrying Roger, I hope you are happy. That's right. A good line. You're like, no. <laughs> uh, and then this wedding dress, I hated it so much. It was so, so ugly. <laughs> they yes. say it cost $25,000. And it was like, it, it looked like they kind of, had a wedding dress and then put another wedding dress on top of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was not okay. great. And she she hated it too, and she even told yeah. <laughs> she even told Roger that she hated it. And then one of the best lines in the whole movie is when she's talking to Jesse, and uh, I, she says, "Oh well, I guess it'll just be the two of us." This after she breaks up with Roger, and. Uh, he says, it's never just been the two of us. Right. And then she says, it's complicated. No, it's not. He loves you, and I'm pretty sure you love him. Right. Great line. Yep. <laughs> and uh, then uh, they said, what, what does your heart want? This is at Midnight Mass. Mm-hmm. And he says, what does your heart want? You. Very romantic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. And I had to die laughing when he uh, he proposes in Midnight Mass, and you got the K Jewelers box. <laughs> well, of box. course, got to get your product placement, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which was a, a thing for a long time. Oof. It was K Jewelers and Hallmark, <laughs> oh, yeah. and don't forget Folgers. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, Folgers, and uh, they they've been doing the Campbell soup lately, really mm-hmm. bad. And then, of course, uh, you have um, what? What is it? The, the Christmas trees. The um, you know, at Christmas time. But. Yeah, and I, I guess they don't. Uh, I wonder if part of the reason why we don't see as many proposals is they lost the key jewelers <laughs> yeah, sponsorship. I think because well, uh, you don't end with a proposal weeks, that right. much anymore, right? But yeah, I think they're trying. But to they had been friends for so long that it yeah. it I, it made sense that he would yeah, just. You, Propose. Definitely bought, buy it in this. I mean, they were basically living like they were a couple, you know, yeah. without being a couple for years anyway. So, yeah, you know, it's basically a common law marriage, practically. Uh, and uh, he says, I guess there really is a Christmas miracle. Yeah. So cute. So I like this better than Christmas card. Uh, I, I think it's really classic. Uh, so I'd probably give this one like a. 4.75 okay i'm actually gonna give you? it 4.5 as well yeah but this is like a more of like a real 4.5 i i gave um the christmas card some extra points for like like i said being like more of like the prototype and yeah. for ed asner but for the for overall movie i think that this was um you know a to me a better overall movie than um the christmas card But like I said, I had to give the Christmas card some bonus points. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Talk about Mrs. Miracle. This is Debbie May Combers, Mrs. Miracle, the full name. This is in 2009. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had, of course, the um, uh, remake. Uh, this um, 
this last season of yes. New Mrs. Miracle. And then there was also Call Me Mrs. Miracle. Mm-hmm. And then a Mr. Miracle. So okay. that's the franchise. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I have seen all four of them. <laughs> do you like this one the best? Yes. Yeah, yeah I do. me too. Um, I, I mean, I like all of them. I think Mr. Miracle is probably my least favorite of the yeah. four. But I like all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the the sequel you've got the uh, the mom coming back, right, from the military. Isn't it? It was She's a soldier. The, it was the dad. It was his was it because dad? she was he was staying. The main character um, was he's staying with her. her aunt. It's the aunt, right? Right. Yes, and her brother is the one that's in oh, the brother. Military. I think it's sister for yeah. Um, his the mom was was dead already, so it was um. Oh right, right. I haven't seen it obviously in a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's been. A, it's but been I just a remember there was years. the soldier that tugged at the heartstrings. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. In that one, uh, so this stars James Vanderbeek and Aaron Carpluck, and of course mm-hmm. Doris Roberts as yeah. uh, as Mrs. Merkel, mm-hmm. Mrs. Miracle. And uh, he cannot control these twins that he has there. <laughs> oh, yes. And it's basically like a Mary Poppins kind of start mm-hmm. to the movie where you yes. have her coming in and uh, revolutionizing the place. Yes. I and love the little scene with the when, when she comes in and they throw snowballs and she catches them. Yeah. And then she throws one like up on like the little, I think it's like a little awning over over the um, like the doorway. And they laugh, and then all of a sudden, all the snow falls on them. <laughs> and, yeah, that's cute. You know, that was hilarious. So they know quickly she, they can't mess around with her. Yeah. Yeah. And they were kind of mop toppy, yeah. the boys. A, yeah, a little, but they were younger, so they can get away with it mm-hmm. a little bit easier yeah. than some of these older kids. That's true. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we have, uh, we also get introduced to Aaron Carplick's character, uh, and her name is Reba. Mm-hmm. Which I've only ever known the singer is, right. of anybody named Reba. Yes, but I, I have not named Reba. But <laughs> uh, what is kind of fun as a Heartland fan, her mother uh, is on Heartland. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Wanda Cannon, the actress, she plays a woman named Val on okay. Heartland. Um, she was Cindy Busby's mother. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, on Heartland. And <laughs> so basically there's a conflict. We find out what happened is that her, she was engaged and her sister, her and her sister are very competitive. She was the first one to get engaged. And she was the, the night, younger sister. Yeah. And the night before the wedding, uh, they call, he calls off the wedding and he runs off with her sister. Yes. And it doesn't even last long, but she can never forgive. Mm-hmm this and uh, i actually thought that was a pretty again you're talking about layered Mm -hmm. for a supporting story kind of a b story i thought it was pretty well done i agree and i think that like the overall conflict that they have later like i think they do a pretty good job of kind of laying the foundation for that um, you know, as we start the movie and going forward. And I think it's completely reasonable for her to not want to be around her sister, even mm-hmm. if, like even if that relationship didn't last long. And it's kind of almost, it almost makes it worse to a degree. It's right. like you, you know, trashed our relationship, um, ruined, ruined, ruined my, you know, my wedding and everything for this relationship that didn't even last, you know? Yeah. So that's true. That's a good point. I mean, I guess we should say overall, what do you, what do you think of this movie? Of course, (laughs) I really love this movie. Um, It's probably one of my, I'll say even to this day, it's probably one of my all time favorites. I think that it does a good job of like mixing the light and comedic moments with more like heartfelt um, drama without getting too melodramatic. It's kind of, it's kind of teeters on that line at at points of being a little melodramatic, but um, I think that they, for the most part, a shoe crossing that line. So yeah. I think that so I really enjoy it, mm-hmm. and I and the ones that I like the best are the kind of are the movies that kind of combine the um, light with um, some of some slightly heavier moments. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think they do a really, really good job with this. And I think the Doris Roberts is just sassy enough mm-hmm. to to be fun in the role. Mm-hmm. And she does a really good job. And uh, I I like little moments like the parent teacher conference with the teacher. She's like, they have a high, uh, they have a high natural enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I funny. love that too. And she was like, you know, sometimes we and we just need to get them to control it and you know to use up some of their energy. And, yeah, and, and I like that that she's planning a pageant. That's mm-hmm. always fun. I wish we did more of those. Mm-hmm. And I thought that the scene with like with the original director of the pageant was was very <laughs> funny. She was kind of very over the top, like, you know, like she's been in the theater and then she's, you know, giving them their directions and she's like slowly backing um towards the end towards like the end of the stage and you see the kids like looking kind of concerned but not really but being afraid to say anything and then she falls backwards. Um, I thought that was a pretty funny scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a very funny scene. And, uh, I do think it's a little over the top with him getting mad at at Mrs. Miracle for showing the boys a picture of their mother. Mm-hmm. Like that seems a little over the top. Yeah, but and, and but the thing is, you know, at least she reacted appropriately. Like, don't you? She's like she basically react reacts to him as if you know he's being he's overreacting and saying oh you know when he's like you know i want to wait to talk to tell them about their mother until they're ready and she says real until they're ready like she knows yeah. um and 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 it's kind of like a silent like not acknowledgement that this is more about him than it is about the boys at that point so i just I, feel like any mm-hmm. reasonable person would want their children to at least see a photo i can understand if it was a journal or something even more kind of intimate than than just a photo like Mm -hmm. i i don't think anybody could see anything wrong with children seeing a picture of their mother yeah um yeah it was a it was like I said, it was a little over the top, but I, I, I just like that. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes in in movies and things like that, they'll they'll have someone react over the top, but they don't really acknowledge it. At least in, right, this, that's in true. this one, they did acknowledge that he was being over the top. And I think, like even like early on, when the kids, are, when they, when Mrs. Um, Merkel first um, comes <clears throat> to the house. And they're like running around playing and they and they bump into the piano or play on the piano. He's like, I didn't I tell you not to play on this piano? I'm like, you know, yeah. which is a little odd because I'm like, if you didn't want them playing on the piano, like why do you have it out? You know? Right. But, Just get rid of the piano, but I guess it's it's the mother's. So right. it's hard. But uh, they <clears throat> he does ask Reba out mm-hmm. and uh uh, they go to the Greek food as Mrs. Miracle recommends it. Mm-hmm. And they figure out after the dinner that he was the guy that would play the piano at the silent movie theater. Yes. That she would go to. And they have a pretty big kiss. Yes. Like for I said, all three kiss. of these movies had <laughs> mid movie kisses. Yeah. And yeah. this one, they are actually dating. So, yeah. yeah, I do love it when we get a real date. Like yeah, the cute ask out the because uh, a lot of times in these movies, they're just sort of like working on vague projects together. There's not mm-hmm. like a real date. Exactly. So I appreciated yeah. that. Because and... it just makes it seem more like adults that, you know, like someone's actually going to, you know, ask someone out. And, I, and it makes more sense mm-hmm. that he's a little clumsy about it because. Yeah. You know he's he you know he's widowed. He hasn't had to ask anyone out for several years at this point. So yeah, so that makes sense. And then they have another date where she ends up coming over for dinner. Mm-hmm. And I, I liked uh, the uh, the cute uh, when he's like, uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, yep. To her, and then we get uh, more kisses. And he's helping out with the uh, the the pageant. Mm-hmm. They even have a spotlight on them. That was funny. Yes. Um, so we find out he finds out about this whole thing with her sister. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and at first he says, set aside the silliness with your sister. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's when she tells him the whole story. Mm-hmm. And he says, what do you do with your, what are you going to do with your anger? Mm-hmm. I think she had told, told him about it first, but then when they were like doing some shopping, yeah. they run into her sister, her husband in a little blanket that was supposed to be a baby. And, um, <laughs> And, and, and he actually sees like her sister is, you could see that she is just, you know, really Mm -hmm. torn up and feels a lot of guilt for, um, you know, the way that she handled things. And she's married to a completely different person and has a little girl. Um, And that's Johanna Newmarch playing her sister. Right. Right. Which is kind of fun. Oh, I mean, I, I really, I, I can nurse a grudge. Mm -hmm. I, I can nurse a grudge. I really mm-hmm. can. It's a bad part of my personality. So I relate to her, Reba, on this level. I think it would be very difficult mm-hmm. to forgive something like that. Yeah. Hard. And from and and the thing is she's not like trying she's not malicious about it. She's just like, look, I don't want to be around her at all. You know? And that's com- and for me that's complete completely with, you know reasonable um especially and i think for them they have such a small family where it's just like their mother and like their aunt and uncle so i mean mm-hmm. if it's like a larger family and there's ga- a gathering like you there's more people as buffer between True. the whole situation you don't really have to directly interact whereas if in a, if it's in a smaller situation you're going to be forced to to interact in those in 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 that kind of setting so mm-hmm. it made sense that she's like, look, I do not want to. You're, we're just gonna have to have separate, separate, um, separate dinners, separate um, gatherings for for Christmas. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. so the pianist at the pageant, uh, through Mrs. Miracle scheming, ends up winning a trip to Fiji. Yes. <laughs> and she's the millionth customer. Yep. So the pianist <laughs> is gone, <laughs> which is pretty clever. <laughs> And so he, uh, she asks him to be the pianist, and that's when he, she says, "Holding on to you're holding on to your grief." Mm-hmm. And then uh, he says, "You took that hurt and buried it deep inside you. I want you to forgive and let go of your anger." Mm-hmm. And then she yeah. says, "The way you let go of yours, yeah." And I, so that's and pretty like- good. I agree. And I think that they did a good job of building up to that. Like we were, you know, we have the the initial scene with her mother where she is, um, you know, they're, they're making, they're, they're going over logistics for Christmas and how their aunt, the aunt and uncle are coming and how they don't want to ha- necessarily have separate dinners. And we, and we've learned about the grudge that she has and like how hurt and upset she is by it. And then with him, you know, we have from the beginning his, um, his kind of wanting to avoid really strong reminders of his wife. And one of those things is the music. And so when you build up to that conflict where, oh, the pian- the pianist is gone and, and we need a replacement. And, and he's already witnessed her around with her sister at that point. And so I felt like it was a more organic conflict than, you know, the whole, how dare you lie to me or right, yeah. oh, this um, guy that, that we, that, that she broke up with comes back into the picture and he thinks that they're getting back together or all the other silly things that happen in, in a lot of these movies. Right. I agree. And uh, Mrs. Miracle finds her bell and she says, it feels good getting something back that you love. Yep. And the sisters make up, mm-hmm. and uh, then uh, he shows his uh, kids the photo album with their mom. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, I think it helps a little bit in retrospect the fact that James Vanderbeek. I don't know if you follow him on on social media or anything, but he is he has a huge family. I think he, he has have, like, five, five or six, or six kids. kids? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You could definitely tell he was very comfortable with the children, which yeah. does does help. Yeah. Very believable. And, as a dad. Uh, and then the pageant, uh, and uh, he is the pianist, which is really cute. Yep. He shows up at the last minute, 
And, you know, it's a big sigh of relief for, for Reba. And she shows him that her sister is out in the audience. So they're both kind of showing that they were making, made those steps in order yeah. to kind of re- um, rebuild their relationship or, or, you know, what they, or the conflict that they had that caused them to break apart briefly. What do you think of the angels that have swords? <laughs> it's I cute. Mean, I, like I said, yeah, it was cute because you know, I remember the scene where the where the, um, Mrs. Merkel is making their their little costumes, and they're like, "Oh, this, you know, we don't want to wear dresses." And then you know, she talks about the warrior angels, and that is what convinces them to um, to go ahead and be angels, and they have their little yeah. swords. So I yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was yeah. cute, and I think that even though I enjoyed the most recent Miss Miracle. I do think that this one balances the heavy with the with the humor and the lighter, you know, Mary Poppins ish moments better. That one felt very heavy. I think. Okay, so I, I think that they that they did that that movie did have some lighter moments, but yeah, I think that there was more emphasis on the heavier. Mo- I. I agree. I, I think that this the balance was was a little better in this one. I think that this that was that the new Mrs. Miracle did a pretty good job too. Yeah. But it was a, a little more weighted towards the heavy, which I think that movie was designed to be. But um, but I but I really enjoyed that one as well. Mm-hmm. I I did too. Uh, and then she says goodbye. Mrs. Miracle says goodbye. Mm-hmm. And that's very cute between her and, and I the love boys. her goodbye to the boys. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, this is a really good movie. I really enjoyed rewatching it. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm tempted to give it a five crowns because I really can't imagine this story being done any better. I feel like this is as good as it gets with Mrs. Miracle. I I agree with you actually. Mm-hmm. I'm like the I I was kind of going back and forth between like four point seven five and five, and I'm like you know like the moment some of the moments got a little um, like too close to being melodramatic for me, but I'm like you know what that's you know I think you like you're saying like what this movie is trying to do, I think that it you know hits the mark for the vast yeah. majority of the time. So I think I want to give it a five. I, I think I'll give it five crowns. Yeah. Well, let us know if you're listening. If you've seen uh, these three, we were fa- we able to find all of them on streaming. So they are possible. It is possible. So let us know what you think of these three movies and uh, make sure that you are following the podcast, the Homework Pod and Homework Use Podcast, all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews five stars. We really appreciate it. If you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure that you check out the merch store. We got lots of festive designs there. And also the patron group, which is where we Thaddeus, uh, we where we got to know Thaddeus. He's a patron. And so if you want to have great experiences, join the Patreon. Uh, we have monthly watch longs and uh q a's and other activities and the facebook group and it's a lot of fun and so we appreciate your support thaddeus as a patron and uh and please uh check out we'll have a, a link in the description we will check out the patreon and thanks so much for doing this i really appreciate it oh, thank you and it was great to be back and i've enjoyed being a patron of the hallmarkies podcast and i encourage other people to join us as well it's a lot of fun yeah Thank you. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Well, hopefully we'll do that. Let us know what you think and we can do this again. It would be really fun. (laughs) Right. Bye, everyone.